Praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Pastor Oladimeji Emmanuel, the pastor in charge of MFMU Church International Headquarters. I believe all is well with you. Uh, wherever you are, all over the world, in the US, in the UK, in Germany, in Russia, in South Africa, wherever you may be uh, right now connected to this special uh, edition 2020 Kairos program with our Father in the Lord, Dr. D.K. Olukoya. You are warmly welcome in Jesus' precious name. Uh, listen to me, friend of God. This particular Cairo is a special one and if you have any question to ask our father in the law uh, wherever you are I want you to begin to send in those questions right now and I trust that the, the law that your question will be attended to so wherever you are you can join us via the Facebook right now join us through the uh, Instagram through the YouTube now right now wherever you are and the Lord bless you as you do so uh, shall we pray our Father, we want to thank you because you are the most high God. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy and your compassion that endure forever. We thank you for the sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. And Lord, we thank you for this special 2020 Cairo program online. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, we commit this particular program into your hand. We ask that you will have your way, you will take your place, and you will make a way for somebody. And at the end of this program, the name of Jesus alone shall be glorified. In the name of Jesus, we therefore declare this uh, program open. Now, in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, ancient of day. In Jesus' mighty name, uh, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So yes, friends, wherever you may be right now, like I said, if you have any question to ask our Father in the Lord, please send them in right now. Uh, and I believe the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Also, you can connect with this program right now. It's very important. And share with your friend also the Facebook, the, on the Instagram, uh, on the YouTube. So connect to us right now and the Lord bless you. I want you to sit back as we watch uh, the clips from the previous uh, Kairos. God bless you as you do so. Remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. If you know you're happy to be here this afternoon, come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Come on, look to your left and your right and give a high five to somebody. Say so you're welcome to this event this day. Amen. Now let's sit down as kings and queens. That is if you recognize yourself as one. If you know you are not a king or you are not a queen, just sit down anyhow. Amen. Yes, we want to welcome you all to this program. I'm sure some of us are wondering, okay, what's the meaning of Kairos? Kairos, Kairos, Kairos. Is that not? Okay, Kairos is a Greek word, uh, which means timeout. So, having a timeout, wait. Dr. Daniel Kolawale Olukoya. I think we should put that together for him once more. Amen. Right now, we'll be having the welcome address. And to do that for us, ladies and gentlemen, let's give a God bless you applause to Pastor Samuel Olutoko. I believe we are clapping for Jesus. I believe we are clapping for Jesus. You are clapping for Jesus and you are not smiling. Clap with Jesus joy in your heart. You are clapping for the awesome God, the mighty God, the God of testimonies that never loses any battle. Jam your hands together louder for the most high God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On behalf of our father in the Lord, Dr. Diki Olukoya, and our mother in the Lord, Pastor Mrs. Shade Olukoya, and also the entire pastorate of the MFM headquarters youth church, and the pastor in charge, Pastor Emmanuel Oladimeji, I warmly welcome you to the Kairos team with Dr. Dick Oluka. Can you please jam your hands together for yourselves? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 11 14 makes us understand something that, that where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counsel, there is what? Safety. As the anchor told us that kairos is a Greek word that means what? Time out. So today, we are going to have a time out with Dr. Dike Olukoya. You have the opportunity of asking questions. Now, it's not just going to be on the pulpit. Calling fire prayers. Calling die, die, die. 
But then, today we want to ask questions. And we want to listen to answers that will give our lives proper direction. I know some persons, they have been looking for opportunities to ask questions concerning career, concerning marriage, concerning finances, concerning ministry, and concerning any area of our lives. I'm sure that today, I pray that because you have come here, you would get answers to your questions in the name of Jesus. Last year was un- wonderful. Last year was awesome. Last year was splendid. And I'm very sure that today is going to be super wonderful. If you are sure that today's time out will be super wonderful, can you please jam your hands together for Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. Once again, I welcome you to Kairos with Dr. Daniel Kolawale Olukoya. Okay. Me John. Man on the mission. Now, see, we came with your dancing shows today. Okay. People plenty with their own uh, jazz. Some other people can go na go their way. Everywhere. Corruption don't fool everywhere for town. Round and round. See. Different kinds of ways. See. One, two, three. Papa, don't shake me. Papa, don't shake me. Papa, don't shake me. Say. So picture me blazing the trail, breaking the scale, even though I came from the back. All right, I'm reaching out to cells that are uptight every time I jump on the track. So clear that I can feel it in my bone. Yes, I know I'm not alone. I'm the kid with the map. No doubt I will never leave the room. I'm the grown cause my people I was born to attack. So bump the stereo pressure play. I'm never letting go. I'm here to stay. I'm standing on my grind. I think I'm out of my mind. You know I'm putting it wrong. You know I fast and pray. Yo, there's no time that I call that you don't pick. You came through with a band just in one click. It's every damn that I say what I'm in and I mean what I say. It's my time so I go speak. People plenty with their own uh, jazz. Some other people mago mago na their way. Corruption don't fool everywhere for town. Round and round, different kinds of ways. Are you ready? Shubat te mi, papa lonche te mi, papa lonche te mi se. Moni te mi, Jesus lonche te mi, papa lonche te mi se. Down, see rest assured, fest board I've never been a type to lose my cool state True fate, so I bless the Lord I can't afford to go there without the word It's the reason why I'm bred and all the thanks to God It gave my life a meaning what I lost to the store We know he came to die, paid a price with his blood And it raised me all the time, he never came out the floor Yo, this my shield, this my pillar, it's my backbone Tell the sound, the alarm, I'm coming back home Truth is I'm living, not into chance For all the followers, past It's revolution, but televised, get it on your smartphone I'm gonna say ain't no facts that are not known I used to fit it with a lot, but I'm a lot grown yeah, no man can do what it does, but when it did it, I was my blow. Tell me, Papa Lonche, tell me, and me, my Lonche, tell me, say. And let's see you move your feet. Let's see you rise to your feet and give God some pressure down to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Papa Lonche, tell me, say. They go plenty with their own uh, jazz. Some other people, Mago Mago, not their way. way. Corruption don't fool everywhere for town. Not and south. Round and round. East and west. Different kinds of ways. Yeah. Yeah. She got to me. Papa don't shake to me. Papa don't shake to me. Say. Yeah. Yeah. Money to me. Jesus. Oh, yeah. There's many that are alive but happy to be in God's presence. Raise your voice and shout a big hallelujah. Hey, to the one who was and needs to come, the ancients of this, the I am that I am, somebody shout a bigger hallelujah! Hallelujah! Now I want you to give your dance to Jesus. Hallelujah! I want you to dance so. And you shake your body for the Lord. Hey, hallelujah. Face your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, I'm going to be blessed more than you. Hey, or your face another one, say, neighbor, we will all be 
Trina, all your Trina, all your Trina. Hey, Papa, oh Papa, oh Papa, oh Papa, oh Papa, yeah. Papa, oh Papa, oh Papa, oh Papa, oh Papa, yeah. Papa, oh Papa, oh Papa, oh Papa, yeah. Papa, oh Papa, oh Papa, oh Papa, oh Papa, yeah. Some people are not dancing. Hey, it's your salary. of the lion of the tribe of Judah we are absolutely nothing like our father and though we roar he seems mighty but he's an empty sound loud and void of power because the lions who should lead the pride now take pride in being the least but look to being the best in everything else that we seek everything else but the kingdom why are priorities misplaced Allow me to ponder on this wonder I have seen under the sun that we who were created in his image and for victory in this age to deliver captives from the Akaja frightened when the nations rage against our heritage, our Israel. That we accept whatever is declared, we do not find the salt and the evil prepared. We just sit and watch from our end and give up. 
give up when we have been given the same nations to break up with a rod of iron and dash them to pieces like a bottled vessel removing every pebble of darkness but we just simply settle for less what happens is not really our business we cannot come and kill ourselves why do we act like pawns when we are kings on this chessboard of life allow me to point another one that i have seen under the sun that will say the king of glory the lord strong and mighty who lifted up asian gets the same jesus in whom all things consist and darkness resist and flees at his presence is resident on our inside yet we find it hard to take over the mountains of influence because our essence is absolutely nothing to write them about because his existence in us to us is more like an assumption a mere ideology of fiction that we let us be fragmented into divisions why do we let the devil shift our focus why do we let him indirectly lead us to self allow me to blot this blunder i have also seen that we begin to flow with every tide allow the enemy take us for a ride we simply lay to death our identity and forsake our divine reality because we keep quiet and for us anything goes because the name of god is blood from our tv screens we keep quiet praying in public places have become obscene we keep quiet our churches have become fashion runways i will wake up from this nightmare someday before it becomes mayday Oh, you chosen ones. God's own masterpiece. You cannot be a friend with the world and be a friend with God. Mockery was the song that the world sang when this ministry started. Sorcery was their attack. But MFM is heavily shielded by God because the man who is on this commission is one who has stood with God against the odds. Amongst all the bad examples, we have one worthy example who can be eliminated emulated in every sphere of life so we are not toothless we cannot be tamed we have to be ruthless with our truth and no matter the work that we should occupy irrespective of the space or sphere we should stand knowing that we do not stand alone but we are set upon a rock and if you are asked by the world why you are so odd you tell them that you are as of the wind you are unpredictable that you are like the sun you are unrestrainable that you belong to a kingdom that is unsurmountable you're fearless you're dauntless you're undefeatable but if they try to stop you then you warn them that you are an eternal soldier and you are never and would never be apologetic about your truth thank you friend welcome back from that uh, college of uh, Kairos performing recap the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Now we, we have a signal right now that our Father and the Lord is ready now to join uh, this stream. God bless you as you flow with us. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I most warmly welcome again to the Kairos session, Kairos meeting. We're going to take the questions as they come. Uh, but if we're not able to answer your questions, we'll answer them next time. Keep sending them in. I bring you greetings on behalf of my wonderful wife. God bless all of you. I pray that the hand of God will continually be upon you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for inviting me to this program. The COVID-19 has been a season that has brought a lot of pain, suffering, fear to a lot of people. And this is very, very clear from what you can see. And as I've been saying and telling everybody that it will appear as if God has pressed a reset button for all of us. So many things have changed. You will agree with me that so many things have changed. So many priorities have changed. I've kept a note of all the lessons I've learned during this period. In my notes, I've written up to 250 lessons that I've learned in this COVID-19 episode. I'm sure others have learned too. I've learned one or two things. Those things <laughs> that we've learned will be with us for a long time. 
we can now see that those things we consider to be very important, we can see that most of them, they are vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. And that we can actually do without them. The nickname I've given to this COVID-19 is holiness by fire by force. It has brought down the level of sin. It has brought up the level of holiness. Really, really seriously, it has brought it up, the level of holiness. Adultery, fornication has gone down. All the night iniquities have gone down. At least in Lagos, where we are now, there is curfew. You can't go out after 8 p.m. People have now seen that all kinds of things they do, and they think that the most important things in life carry no value at all. People that have never read books are now reading books. Those who do not stay with their family or pray with their family at all, they stay and pray with their families now. Those who have not been reading the Bible, they started reading the Bible to see what is going on. Those who are always out, they have no time for God, no time for anything, now they have been forced to have time. And now, <laughs> With the face mask on faces of people, now you cannot even differentiate who is handsome or who is beautiful. It has made everybody ugly. The face mask has wiped away everything that makes people's face look good. It has made a lot of difference. I'm praying that the lessons God wants us to learn from this matter will learn it in the name of Jesus. It's obvious that there is a supernatural hand behind all this and that the Almighty is not happy. But the major lesson that I, can, I, I think we learn from this is that man will always be man and God will always be God. And that uh, he, if God can use just one virus to do all this, God can wipe out the entire human race with just one virus. It doesn't need the bombs. It doesn't need the guns. This COVID-19 has really humbled mankind. It has humbled mankind. It has made mankind to do very deep thinking. It is purifying the greedy heart. It has impacted family life. It has made some people readers. It has made some people better parents. It's a very serious matter indeed. It has impacted humanity in a way that has never happened before. It has made us understand that the Almighty God is greater than man, and that God is God and humans are just humans, and that with a single virus, God can wipe out the entire human race, not with guns, not with battles, not with bombs. It has made many people to see the priorities in life. It has made many people to understand that going to church is not the same thing as going to God or being a friend of God. It has rendered money useless to the rich. It has become a powerful leveler. It has made many pastors to learn that there is a difference between putting blocks together and building people. It has brought sanity into many aspects of human life. It has become a divine measuring instrument. It has become a leveler of humanity because it has no respect for religion, no respect for status, no respect for tribe, no respect for gender, no respect for ruler, no respect for culture, no respect for your academic level. Without a passport, without a visa, it has invaded countries and it does it lawlessly in his rage, it's lawless in his rage. It has made the mighty to cry and the rich people to run for cover. It is an interesting thing. Marital infidelity has dropped. Even boyfriends are running away from girlfriends now. Some couples are forced to stay at home. Marital distancing has miraculously dropped. Even terrorists and kidnappers seem to have withdrawn to their camps. 
Having said this, beloved, what should be our approach as children of God to the apples in the world in this season? Because all of a sudden, things are happening at a fast rate. Our approach, all children of God should sit down and reconsider their ways. All children of God should repent from every known sin. All children of God should use this opportunity to move very close to God. Use the opportunity to move very close to God. All children of God should use this opportunity to reassess their lives and see whether their names are written in the book of life or they are on their ways to hell. So our approach should not be that of fear. It should be that of confidence in the Lord once we are sure that we are God's friends. God bless you in Jesus' name. You are correct that a crisis like this has always precipitated the move of God and started new beginnings for so many people. As a child of God, at this particular time, the kind of prayers you should be praying is prayer for getting on fire for God, prayer for restoration, prayer for revelation knowledge, prayers for destiny fulfillment, and prayer for empowerment. Prayer for God to position you well. After the COVID-19 is over, it's obvious that there will be a lot of crisis. Many people have lost properties. Many have lost things. Many have lost money, job. There are plenty of challenges ahead. So a believer should strengthen himself now and be able to position himself. Point of corrections. Churches have not been shut down. You don't you can't shut down the church. The church is not a building. The church is an assembly of God's people. And one of the lessons pastors must learn from this that it's better to build people than to build churches. The church of God is the church of God wherever they are scattered. It's an assembly of people. You can see now the church buildings, the beautiful cathedrals, the wonderful auditorium. The skyscrapers, they've been shut down. So God is indirectly telling us that, indirectly telling us what he said in the book of Acts of Apostles, that the Almighty does not dwell in temple built by hands. Many years back, I spoke to our ministers to start online churches. That time it looked strange to them, but why should we start online churches? Some branches obeyed, and now they are reaping the benefits. I repeat the dividend. Go up all of us in Jesus' name. This is the way out. Yes, it was a prophetic move that all branches should begin online services. But many did not see the importance at all at the time I was saying it. You see, during the transition from December 31st to January 1st of this year, I was telling the people we need to pray because it's going to be a messy year and that we should fast once a week for the nations because there will be restlessness. You can see what is happening now. May the Lord help us. Very interesting question. If I had to do something different from the scratch as regards my work with the Lord, is that I will have spent quality time training manpower, concentrating on training manpower and building up men who are loyal and have integrity. The revival of the mountain of fire cut us on our ways. And because it caught us in our ways, a lot of square pegs were put in round holes 
and that has been a problem to us. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. This is a very difficult question to recommend five books out of 500, but I'll make an attempt. I will, for young people, I will recommend Instructions to Champions, 70 Sermons to Preach Your Destiny, The Prayer Reign, Be the Best and Be the Best, and all the Destiny books. I also want to recommend that young people should get a copy of the message of Divine Encounter or the book. A Divine Encounter is something you cannot do without. When you experience God, it's an unforgettable thing in your life. I used to share it and I can still share it today. I'm never tired of sharing it. That God took me to heaven and I saw many things there. Fantastic music, fantastic beauty. But one thing I will never forget is the joy on their faces. So you need a divine encounter. If you want to have a divine encounter, the principle is very simple. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. And the principle is in one word, brokenness. All broken Christians will always have divine encounters. There are 10 commandments that I followed as a young person that has shaped my life. I will tell you those 10 commandments. Number one, don't let your parents down. They brought you up. Number two, choose your companion with care because you become as they are. Number three, be the master of your habit or they will master you. Number four, treasure your time. Don't spend time, invest time. Time waits for no man. Number five, always stand for something or you will fall for anything. Number six, pray for favor to find a good spouse. 90% of your success or failure depends on this. Number seven, see what you can do for others and how you can be a blessing unto others. Number eight, guard your thoughts. What you think is what you are. Number nine, do not be allergic to prayers and the word of God. Number 10, give your all to Christ. He gave his all for you. These are the 10 commandments that has shaped my life as a young person from my early age. What I struggled with most as a young man was poverty. Poverty is very bad. As I've shared with some of you, that in the poverty house I was living in those days, I learned a lot of secular songs. Not because I wanted to learn them, but because as the poverty house, I could, poverty woman could afford. And so this man plays music and sells LPs and records uh, at the back of the house and he plays them, on, he plays them on loudspeaker throughout the day. So I was forced to learn those songs out of poverty. So I can see the poverty in my family line. In my family line, I decided I was not going to be an extension of that poverty. May you not be an extension of, of any poverty in the name of Jesus. But I did not know how to battle the poverty. As you have read in some of the books that I have written, particularly "Be the Best and Be the Best," I learned how to deal with poverty. One day, when one of our teachers in school said the way to fight poverty is to read your book. Oh. You fight poverty by reading books. I was going to church, nobody told us how to get rid of poverty. That was the first time somebody would give me an idea. So I began to read. And as I've been telling you, you young people, I read from 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. every day for two years. And it's you dealt dividends. God bless you in Jesus' name.
The first point is that the ancient landmark is still the ancient landmark. And the Bible said, don't remove that ancient landmark. God cannot be modernized. God is the ancient of days. While you are not removing the ancient landmarks, you should not become spiritually mad by trying to use sinful methods to get sinners to Christ. No. Our fathers in the faith did not use sinful methods to get across to sinners. They demonstrated the power of God. I'm a firm believer that anywhere the power of God is demonstrated, whether young or old, people gravitate towards that place. We thank God for the technology that is available now. But like all technologies, they have the positive part and the negative part. We as gospel people should use the positive aspect of whatever technology is available to preach the gospel. Be it Facebook, Internet, Satellite, Instagram, whatever it is. Anything to reach the lost, we should be interested in it. We cannot refuse to use those technologies because we want to practice ancient landmark. Ancient landmark is not backwardness. We can practice the ancient landmark using new technologies without getting caged by the new technologies, which is the problem. A lot of outsiders have great misconceptions about Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry, simply because we pray aggressive prayers. They believe our church is where nobody smiles, nobody plays, Nobody dances, nobody jokes, nobody sings. You just go to church, and once they say the opening prayers, everybody will be shouting, die, 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 until the service closes. A lot of people have this very grave misconception about the mountain of fire and miracles ministry. Whereas this is not so. The mountain of fire and miracles ministry is a friendly ministry, and it's a ministry of solution evangelism and when you fight a strong enemy you have to become strong this is why this our online programs is now giving some people another impression about mountain of fire what mountain of fire is really all about some looking at our program saw that uh, we have first class music we have first class in many things that we do in fact uh, the mfm as the largest number of first class students in Nigeria. In our last convention, we awarded, we gave award to 300 first class students. But people have a lot of misconception. It's true, we preach holiness within and without. And a lot of people think that the place is just like a slave house. What else is not so? We have the best music, we have drama group, we have youth church, teenage church. We have, I have a 70 point agenda that we are running for youth. So the non-friendly attitude comes in when there is spiritual warfare and we are battling the enemy. So a lot of people have these misconceptions. A lot of people think that we also ask people to die. No, MFM does not pray for people to die. If we are praying for people to die, that's witchcraft. That's not in the Bible. The word die does not mean just stop breathing. That has many meanings. That could mean action has stopped. That could mean things have vanished. That could mean something is no longer available. That could mean something that is battling you is powerless in your life can't affect you anymore. So we don't pray for spirits to die. Spirits don't die. But the spirits can be unavailable to trouble you. If the spirit is unavailable to trouble you, then to you it's dead. But to others, it's alive. This is the explanation some people need to hear. Right. God has been helping us and God will continue to help us in Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry. God bless you in Jesus' name. During my PhD, which was done in the University of Reading, I had time to pray. I had time to focus. I had time to think really hard. I had time to plan the future. Time to begin to study into what God really wants me to do in the future. I was given the opportunity to stay behind in the UK and continue living there and working there. But I said, no, the foundation of my destiny is not in that location. I have to go back.
My biological father was a converted Muslim who eventually became a pastor. And he practically died in the mission field. He worked last as a missionary in a village outside Patakot, where we went to pick him up in his last days. He was working in that village. I learned many things from him. He was a prayer warrior, a night warrior. He was the only one who said, then he kneel down and he would lay hands on me and begin to pray. He was very strict, at the same time can be liberal. He was highly focused and pursues what he wants to do rigorously. I miss him quite a lot. You can always find time to do anything you want to do. Time for your quiet time, time for personal study, time for reading your other books, time for looking at your work, time to look at other things you want to look at. You just schedule your time. So, so time for this, so time for this, a line upon line, precept upon precept, so you'll be able to achieve more. Yes, I have spiritual fathers, but most of them have gone to be with the Lord now. But I see one of them alive, to the glory of God. The name is Pastor Eme Adewe, who came to minister in our church when we were doing the celebration of life for my late mother. He is still pretty much alive. Thank God for his life. This is why the mountain of fire and miracles ministry is a do-it-yourself ministry. You are taught to pray by yourself. You are taught to hear God by yourself. You are taught to become a prophet by yourself. You are taught to be able to handle your own destiny. Early this year, we started a teaching series on every member a prophet. Meaning, you should be independent. You shouldn't allow somebody else to be directing your destiny. Your pastor can pray, you can pray. Your pastor can prophesy, you can prophesy. Your pastor can see vision, you can see vision too. Your pastor can hear from God, you should hear from God. It's a tragedy when others are telling you what God is saying about you, when you yourself don't know what God is saying about you. It's a serious problem. And as a young man, young woman, you should know that he says, I'll pour out of my sweet upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So you are covered, you shall prophesy. Young men shall see visions, old men shall dream dreams. Point of correction. Nothing is irreversible with God. The Bible says with man this is impossible. But with God all things are possible. If you find yourself already in a bad, wrong marriage, there is still the God of divine intervention. There is something known as divine intervention. Things can still be turned around. Separation, divorce, when it involves children, is not the answer. It's not the answer. Children from broken home have more propensity to do bad things. The answer is to seek the face of God for divine intervention. If you, are, if you know you've, you, are, you have a very bad or poor marriage. As Christians, who wants to marry, you must receive instructions from God. But the instructions you must receive from God on who to marry, who not to marry, must be Bible-based. The Bible says you can't marry a particular group of people. What the Bible says you should not do. There is no prayer. You are going to pray that God will answer you on that one. So marry according to what the Bible says. Oh, criticisms. <laughs> criticisms are very good, actually. 
Because most times, your friends will not tell you the truth. It is your enemy who will tell you the truth. So the way to handle criticism is this. If you criticize me, I look at your points. The ones I know I'm guilty at, I will correct it. The one I'm not guilty at, I ignore it. That's how to handle it. When something is unusual and unpopular, and people don't understand it, they will be against you because they don't understand it. And everybody is entitled to their own opinion. God gave man that right to have his own opinion. But I will not allow your opinion to control my own destiny. There are many things I've said in the past. And I don't say anything, beloved, unless I've prayerfully researched into it. I've said some things in the past which made people to attack me, criticize me, call me names. But eventually, they discover the truth now. So if I've, if I've said something in the past and some people have been attacking it, it's just a matter of time before people begin to discover the truth. The Bible calls believers the salt of the earth. So we should be the salt of the earth. When we are on earth here, we should serve the master and be a light. If truth cannot be found anywhere, it should be found in the house of God. It should be found amongst believers. Believers should be trusted people wherever they are. We cannot allow corruption to catch us up. We must always find out the truth and live by the truth. Believers don't tell lies, we don't falsify receipts, we don't plan evil, we don't plan to steal money. Christians are supposed to say no to corruption. Wherever we are, Christians should prefer to lose their position than to live the life of a false, to live a falsehood, to live in falsehood. Lose your position instead of living in falsehood. If the organization is doing something wrong, there's nothing wrong, you as a Christian saying this, what they are doing there is wrong, I'm not a part of it, I don't want to be part of it. So, once you want to go and report what's going on, make sure you have all your facts and you're not lying against anyone. But the same for evil to continue, then good men will always keep quiet when evil will continue. You see, but as far as the Bible is concerned, wisdom is profitable to direct. Ask all questions you can take for today. God bless you. We believe God that very soon we shall meet and do our Kairos physically. But keep sending your questions. God bless you. Bye for now. In the name of Jesus, I decree that the blessings of God will be upon you. And your life will continue to be a testimony to the glory of Jehovah. I cover you and your family with the blood of Jesus. No evil shall be for you. Then I shall any plague with now you come. It is well with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Friend, God bless you really good. Uh, I believe you are blessed tremendously from that section of Kairos, Power Pack Kairos, with our Father in the Law, Dr. D.K. Olukoya. There's no doubt, I know that God has blessed you richly, and the Lord bless you really good in Jesus' name. I believe by the special grace of God, if Christ tarry in the year 2021, we shall meet physically for that program by the special grace of God. And like he said, that if your qu question are not being attended to, don't, don't bother, it will be attended to sooner or later. And the Lord will bless you. Stay safe and remain blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you.